Galactic Navy Officer Becomes an Adventurer, written by Edo. Chapter 33. Pork Cutlet Sandwich and Magic Tool Manufacturing Basic Course. Part 1. I took my usual morning bath, prepared myself for the day, and went down to the first floor. Today, I'll start attending the Magic Tool Manufacturing Short Course. But isn't having it at 8 in the morning a little early? It looks like the branch chief doesn't want the lessons to affect her part-time work at the clinic. I passed by the dining area and found Verse busy wiping the tables as always. It looks like it's his job to tidy up the tables every morning. Yo, Alan. You gonna have breakfast? Good morning, Verse. Rhea and Elna haven't come down yet, so just cook one portion for me. I guess I've kind of been enamored too much by making tonkatsu. Is tonkatsu for breakfast okay with you? I kind of want to get in a bit more practice according to the recipe you wrote. Chim, okay. Tonkatsu right in the morning, huh? It doesn't sound bad. Oh yeah. Do you have some bread? I baked some this morning for use in making breadcrumbs. Why? So he baked some bread especially for use in making breadcrumbs, huh? I guess Verse really is quite serious regarding mastering deep-fried food. Can I use some of them? You also have some mayonnaise left, right? I remembered that a lot of the mayonnaise I made two days before were still stored in the inn's magic fridge. Of course you can. I can just bake some more bread if you use them all up. Mayonnaise is that sauce you prepared two days ago, right? Yeah, we still have some. Great. Let me make breakfast today, okay? Sure, no problem. Please make some for me as well. The both of us entered the kitchen. I prepared some cabbage, mustard, bread, and tonkatsu. I shredded the cabbage, cut up a piece of sirloin tonkatsu into large slices, cut the bread into two, and thinly coated one side with mustard. I spread a generous helping of mayonnaise on both bread slices. I put a large portion on the shredded cabbage on one bread slice, put on the sliced tonkatsu on the other, and put both parts together. With this, the mayonnaise cutlet sandwich is complete. This is something called a katsu sandwich. In my country, it's not eaten for dinner, but for breakfast or lunch instead. It's delicious even if the tonkatsu used is cold. Verse and I ate our sandwiches. And this is good. The mayonnaise really complements the taste of the other ingredients and brings them together. It really is good. So something like this is also possible. While we were eating in the dining area, Cleria and Elna finally came down. What's that, Alan? That's so unfair. You too. You're eating something delicious by yourselves. What do you mean by unfair? It's your fault for being a late riser. Verse will prepare some for you guys too, so don't worry. It looks like Verse went over to the kitchen to prepare their share right away. The inn girl went out of the kitchen carrying a great number of katsu sandwiches. So it's a dish made with tonkatsu. It's delicious. Cleria and Elna became absorbed in eating the sandwiches. The three of us rested for a bit after eating and drank some warm tea. Oh yeah. What are you two going to do today, Cleria? We're planning on visiting the temple this morning. We haven't been able to go for some time now, and I have many things I want to thank Goddess Ruminus for. The temple, huh? I also wanted to go as well. I was quite interested in the goddess worshipped by Cleria and the natives of this planet. You should be free in the afternoon, right, Alan? I'd like for you to teach us magic, if possible. Oh, right. We've finally gotten some free time, so I want to brush up on my magic as well. But we can't exactly cast spells in the middle of town. It would be bad if we get attention, right? I'll ask Verse about a suitable spot. We called Verse to ask if he knows about a nice practice spot. Sorry. I know you're busy with work. Do you know of a place where we can freely practice magic spells without bothering anyone? You can use magic, Alan? Yeah, I'm actually ranked B in the magic guild. B rank. Ain't that just impressive? Magic spell practice, right? You can get to an open rocky area if you go out of the city and walk for about 30 minutes. There aren't any monsters, and it's mostly devoid of plants as well. There ain't a lot of people who go there. I heard that people who can use magic in the city often use it as a practice field. I see. Thanks. Yash. 
Let's all go there in the afternoon. Oops. It's almost time for my lessons. I'll see you guys later. This is bad. I don't want to be late for the first day. I'll set an alarm from now on. I went out in a hurry and managed to reach the Magic Guild just a few minutes before 8 in the morning. I entered straight away and found no one else except for Lily again. I haven't even seen a single client or guild member since I first came here. Is the Magic Guild really okay? Good morning. Hey there, Lily. Good morning to you too, Alan San. The chief's been waiting for you. Please proceed to the back room. I knocked on the door first before I entered. When I did so, I found the room's interior lined up with a number of desks. The branch chief sat at the largest desk at the back of the room. It looks like she's reading a book. Good morning, chief. Good morning, Alan San. You can just call me Alan. Chief is my master after all. Fufu. Master, huh. It has a nice ring to it. All right then, Alan. Let's start with the lessons. We will conduct the lessons on the second floor. The second floor was a large room with wood and various other materials piled up together. It resembled a small workshop or factory. There was a really large table in the center of the room. It seems the lectures would be given out from this table. How much do you know about magic tools, Alan? Nothing much, really. I just know that you need magic stones to serve as an energy source in order for the magic tools to activate the magic installed in them. Well, that's basically correct. Have you already seen a magic tool in action before? I've used a fire-producing magic tool and a refrigerating magic tool before. If so, I don't need to especially give you a live demonstration. Let's move on to what exactly happens inside of a magic tool. The chief went to a corner of the room and brought what looked to be a flame magic tool onto the table. This is a flame magic tool. I'm familiar with it. I've used a similar item before. Era in this city? Yeah. It's in a place called the Nature's Bounty Inn. I see. What are your impressions after using it? It was nice. The flames come out pretty easily. That's something I designed. Is that so? What about the refrigerating magic tool? Yes, I designed it too. They're pretty good items, aren't they? Yup. The fridge is able to uniformly cool down everything inside it. All right then, let's take a look at the actual insides of a magic tool now. Chief opened the back cover of the magic tool. The cover seems to be made of wood. The surface was completely covered in black, so I didn't notice before. The parts where flames come out are properly made of metal, but most of the other parts were made of wood. So these were made of wood. Did you coat the surface with some kind of material? Yes. The coating is some fire-resistant paint. And by the way, the exact production method of this paint is a top secret in our magic guild. I see. Understood. A magic tool structure can be roughly divided into four parts. Magic stone. Magic Conductor, Magic Circle, and Magic Output Stone. She pointed out each part as she mentioned them. The Magic Stone is fitted into the interior of the Magic Tool and was connected with something which looked like a string. This was called a Magic Wire, apparently. The Magic Wire connected to the Magic Stone was also attached to the lever which turns on and adjusts the fire that comes out. The arching plate in which the first magic wire was attached also had another line of magic wire coming out of the other end, which is then attached to the magic circle. The magic circle in question was a sort of complicated pattern peppered with all sorts of different symbols that were written on a piece of paper. The magic output stone, on the other hand, was a cone-shaped, transparent crystal installed just below the part that releases flames. The center portion of the magic circle was also fitted with a magic wire that connects it and the magic output stone together.